We are going to have a, a water baptism here in just a little bit. And if you're a guest here and you come to watch family, we're so happy uh, that you're here and, and just rejoice that you're here. Give all our guests a big hand and come for that. We appreciate you coming. And, um, um, and I, I trust that by the end of this service, you'll understand the magnitude of what's happening today because it is no lightweight matter to be water baptized. It's not some kind of just uh, common thing that the church does. Even, uh, even sometimes we, we do that with communion, but it's not common. It, it's unique. Do you understand that? It's unique. God gave us some unique things. Today we're going to have water baptism. Friday we're going to receive communion. Those are unique to who we are. And they have all have very strong, powerful spiritual implications in our lives. But I just want to run through some scripture with you. I'm not going to try to read all of these, uh, but uh, I will read some of them. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, Jesus himself said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself gave us that command that we were responsible uh, to do that and that, that that was part of who we are. Mark chapter 16, it says in verse 15, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now listen to what else it says. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Now, you know, I, I want to just mention this for a minute. I'm not going to preach on this today, but a lot of people think you, you can't even be saved if you're not water baptized. But I know this. I know you can't be filled with the Holy Spirit without being, um, uh, without being saved. And there were people that were filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they were water baptized. But on the other side of that, I do think it is something that is demonstratively completely something that we as believers are responsible to do is to be baptized because it is a powerful, powerful demonstration. And not only that, it really, I'm going to show you this from the Word today, it really energizes the Holy Spirit in our lives when we do. So immediately after the day of Pentecost, the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter said to the multitude, repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive, notice this, the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you and to your children and all who are far as many as call on the name of the Lord. So the, the, the thing that we need to understand here is this, that it is part of our life. Now I know you, some of you, if you're, if you're denominationally or doctrinally inclined, you've noticed that in one place Jesus said, go and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then here it says, in the name of Jesus. And sometimes people don't want to argue about that. In fact, I've heard people say, well, if you're not baptized the way you're supposed to be baptized, then, then you're not really saved. We had, uh, uh, it's interesting, Becky and I had to drive to Arkansas yesterday to do a, um, to do a wedding and uh, with some dear friends of ours, we've been friends for many years, over, over uh, 40 years, and um, they actually uh, got saved in a meeting, one, probably the first or one of the first meetings I ever had. And uh, he, he's an attorney up in Arkansas now. And, and uh, so after that, they wanted to be baptized. And so we went out to the Saline River, backwaters of the Saline River up there uh, uh, in um, southeastern Arkansas, and pushed the limbs and the snakes and everything away and got in the water and, and, and baptized them. Well, they had been going to a, a little Baptist church there. And um, <laughs> it's funny because uh, when they got back, it had already, got, you know, little small towns, things go around quick, right? They already knew that they'd been baptized. And they were upset about it. And the pastor basically said, you can't come back to church here. And they said, why? And what did he call it, Becky? He said, you have had an alien baptism. <laughs> I've always said foreign baptism, you know, but, but I, I don't understand it being foreign. We were in Arkansas. We were not in some other country somewhere, another planet. 
So people have all kinds of, of, of interesting thoughts about that, but I just do it this way, and you'll hear me do this today. I just baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy, Holy Spirit by the name of Je- by and in the name of and, and under the authority of the name of Jesus. So that way you can nobody can argue with you. How were you baptized? Well, I was baptized in the name of Jesus. Well, you should have been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, I was. Amen. Because that's not what's, listen, the authority is all under the name of Jesus, okay? But, but if Jesus said that, we want to try to uh, ascribe to that as much as we can, but we also have to go by what the rest of the Word of God teaches as well. Because I've, I've had people get mad at me about that one way or the other. I had a man ask me one time, what baptism do you baptize with? I knew where he was going with that. But anyway. So you don't want to get caught up in that because that's not what we're dealing with today. And that's not what we're rejoicing about. It's not about that. We know it's the name of Jesus that's above every name and every knee shall bow at that name. Amen. But we know the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're involved as well, all three of them. So we're going to give everybody credit. Amen. Because they all deserve it. Praise God. But I just want to just kind of read on here. I'm not going to read all these. Over in Acts chapter 12, uh, Philip preached and had miracles just everywhere, wonderful miracles. And the Bible talks about that. And it says in, in verse 12 that, um, um, that uh, when they believed Philip as he preached things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus, both men and women were baptized. Amen. Thank God for that. Then Philip actually was supernaturally drawn away and there was an Ethiopian riding in a chariot down the road reading the Old Testament in Isaiah and Philip stood there and said, what are you reading? He said, well, I'm reading it, but I don't understand it. Can you help me? And Philip jumped on the chariot with him and started preaching Jesus to him. Amen. And next thing you know, the Ethiopian said, well, here's some water. I want to be baptized. And he said, well, if you believe, you can. He said, I believe. Stop right there. I don't, we don't even know. It could have been a muddy hole in the road. We don't know what it was or what the water that he was baptized in, but it wasn't baptismal tank. It was somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. And apparently he'd preached water baptism to him. Why else would he have said, hey, I want to be baptized. So it's important that you understand. I know I'm going through these. But it's very important. First thing, one of the very first things that happened uh, to um, Saul, who became the Apostle Paul, over in Acts chapter 9, after he got saved and his eyes were open, first thing he did was he got baptized. He got baptized. Why? Well, because there are powerful implications to water, water baptism. So then Paul's out preaching over in Acts chapter 19, and he runs around, uh, across some Baptists. You didn't know there were Baptists in the Bible. Did you know there were Baptists in the Bible? It's true. Oh, brother, I'm really getting in trouble now. I love Baptists. I'm not upset, you know. But, but Paul, um, Paul came and said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And they said, we didn't even know there was any Holy Spirit. And Paul said, well, what baptism were you baptized with? And they said, John the Baptist. Well, that wasn't enough. So Paul, um, uh, ba- Paul <laughs> was ministered to him and uh, baptized him. And as soon as they were baptized, the Holy Spirit came on them and they, they, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So all through um, the book of Acts, and we've been talking about the book of Acts now for quite a while, all through the book of Acts, you find that this was a very important, powerful, premier part of the gospel and the value of the gospel to the believer. It's not just a baby dedication. Don't get me wrong, but it's not. It's something that is powerful. There are actions that take place by the Holy Spirit in water baptism. Some of them we don't understand today, but I believe, listen, I believe there are people who got baptized when they were younger and made a commitment to Jesus and got away from them. They ain't never getting away from that water baptism and what God did for them in, in, through that, and it, it literally the Holy Spirit will haunt them. How do you know? Because he did me. Because I got baptized when I was 12 years old. 
And I knew what I was doing when I got, I knew about it, but I didn't walk in it. I walked away from it, but it haunted me. It's a powerful thing. Really, there's a lot more to it than that. But it is that premier piece of the gospel that we've got to understand is part of our lives and a part of who we are. It is our eternal witness of what God has done for us through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can give everybody your testimony, but just stop and say, you know what, and I was baptized in water. I was buried in that water, and I was raised to newness of life. I demonstrated that, and I am sealed by the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make me want to go get water baptized again. <laughs> and by the way, that'd be all right too. Now here's the thing uh, that you've got to understand. Uh, it's our badge of honor and our declaration of who we are. It, it sets you apart when you're water baptized. We're not, we're not playing games today. We're not doing this just to make people feel better better to soothe their conscience, we're making a declaration of what God has done, what God is doing, and what God is going to do in their lives. So it's a seal that we have for for our lives, and we've got to understand that and realize it's our badge of honor that we carry with us everywhere. And here's the other thing, and this is really kind of what I want to focus on for a few minutes today, is it is always attended by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to show you this. It's always attended by the Holy Spirit. And if you understand that, then you realize that during water baptism, the Holy Spirit can do anything He wants to do. In, re- in regard to that resurrection that he was, a, he was a part of. He's there before, He's there after. Why? Why? Because the water baptism is all about newness of life and walking in that new life. And that water baptism is a declaration of I am going to walk in that that God's done in my life. I am going to let the power of God work in my life. I am going to serve Jesus. I am going to live the life that that death, burial, and resurrection declares belongs to me. This is not something we do just to make other people feel, oh, he got baptized. Isn't that sweet? No, it's a declaration. It's, it, 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 it's really a phenomenal action and a, a declaration that's beyond natural understanding because it's just part, it's what we are. It's who we are. In fact, to be honest with you, we're all Baptist. Now, if you've been sprinkled out, The Bible doesn't talk about sprinkle. It talks about baptism. Baptism means you go under the water, and there's a reason for that. And and I'm not trying to discount your your faith, but I'm just telling you, we're demonstrating a death, a burial, and a resurrection. Amen? Amen? And it's hard to do that with, with, with just a little sprinkle of water. But if that's all you got, just get as much of it as you can. That's all I can tell you. No, this is a bold declaration. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, we are new creatures in Christ. It says, old things have passed away. Behold, look, all things have become new. That's what what we're talking about when we talk about uh, water baptism. It's a seal that's never to be broken. Now listen to this, because I'm telling you some things that are going to happen today with these uh, men and women and and young people that, that will happen during this. It breaks down every barrier in our soul that would hinder this new life in Christ Jesus. It breaks them down in our soul. You may have made Jesus the Lord of your life, but there are things in our soul that we have to deal with. And that water baptism breaks down all of that and gives the Holy Spirit the opportunity to work in our lives in a way that we don't otherwise have. We give him permission by our act of faith. 
So we've got to understand and realize it will, it, 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 there is a, a, a breaking of any chain by the Holy Spirit. Listen to me. Those of you that are going under that water today, I want to tell you something. If you need healing in your body, if you need the fullness of the Holy Spirit in your life, if you need your uh, sins forgiven, if, you, if you've gotten over into something you haven't got any business being, don't feel bad about it. Just receive forgiveness. Amen. Just receive deliverance if you need it. If you've got bad habits and you've been struggling with them, you say, I'll just, I'll just use this for an example. You know, I just can't kiss, quit smoking. Well, you are today. Because when you go under that water, that your soul is going to be cleansed. You're going to have the power to resist that because the power of the Holy Spirit is a witness that you're declaring who you belong to and is a witness of what you're doing today. We're, we, know by the, we know by the authority of the Word of God that, that the Holy Spirit can break any chain off of your life. And you say, well, why water baptism? You want me to tell you why? Romans 8, 11 says this. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. He's, he, he was the ultimate resurrection power. And now when you demonstrate that in your own life, he's there. He's attracted to that. He wants to be a part of that. He wants to be active in your life. It's just like the, the, the one group that, the, that we talked about, they were, they were water baptized and came up out of the water filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? He, is in, he loves resurrection. Same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. That's his activity. That's what he wants to do. That's where he wants to be. That same spirit will rise up in you and come upon you as you're buried with him in that water to newness of life and do what you need done in your life. Maybe you're struggling in your mind. Hey, he's there. It doesn't matter where you are, healing in your body, whatever, whatever, because he's there to break the chains. And here's the key, and let me show you this from the Word of God uh, to what baptism can do. Let me just read these scriptures, Colossians chapter 2, verse 12 out of the New King James, and then I want to read part of it out of the Amplified, but listen to this. It says, we're buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him now listen to this, raised with him through faith in the working of God, through faith in the working of God. Now we know that you get saved by accepting Jesus by faith, but there is a working of God even in the baptism that you're going to be baptized today in. There's a working of God. Everybody still with me? Why? Because he was raised from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and uncircumcision of your flesh, he's made alive together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses. Let me tell you, I can tell you confidently today, if you go under that water by faith, you're going to come up, up out clean, forgiven. You're going to be free of it. Not because the water did it, but because of your faith and your demonstration of what God has done. Because it says he wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he took them out of the way, nailing them to the cross. So it's a, listen to me, it's about your faith in God's working in your life. And that comes because of that resurrection. So whatever you go down with, just leave it and come back up fresh. Amen. Amen. Maybe you've been struggling just serving God. Well, make up your mind when you go under that water and you come back out, you're going to come back out a new person in Jesus' name. Now, I don't mean born again again, but you're going to have all that stuff left behind. And listen to me, the Holy Spirit is going to be working to that end in your life. It's interesting that Paul prayed a prayer and he prayed, and I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Bible, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19, he said that you may know what, now listen to this, what it, may know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited 
and surpassing greatness, now listen to this, of his power in us and for us who believe. As demonstrated, you ready? In the working of his mighty strength, you ready? Which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Do you understand that God demonstrated what he would do in your life by what he did through work, the working of God in raising Jesus from the dead? It was a demonstration. It was a demonstration. A demonstration of what? It was a, listen to me, it was a demonstration, you ready? Of the immeasurable, the unlimited, the surpassing greatness of his power to us who believe, uh, believe as he demonstrated in the working of God when he raised Jesus from the dead. So when you come up out of that water today, I want to tell you everything's available for you. Soundness of mind is available for you. Broken habits, broken sin, whatever, everything is broken off because of the working of God. Well, I don't know whether God can do that. Well, the Bible says he's unlimited. Well, if he's unlimited in your life, that means there's nothing he can't do. Nothing is impossible because of the resurrection that lives in you by the power of the Holy Spirit. So get ready today. Not just to say, I was water baptized today. I have a picture that somebody showed me of water baptism. I don't want to show that picture. In fact, I tried to steal it, but many, how many years ago would that be? 32 years ago. It's okay. She's sitting here today still serving God. Something must be working. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you need to expect God today. Amen. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to drown you. <laughs> well, I can't swim. Well, you don't have to swim. You might come up out of the water knowing how to swim. I mean, when God's working, supernatural things are happening, you never know. But I do know this. I do know whatever you need when you come out of that water, having demonstrated the effective power that's available to you, you can receive forgiveness, healing, soundness in mind, a broken habits, fear can break off of your life. Unknowing can break off of your life. Just not knowing. You know, that's a miserable feeling sometimes, isn't it? Just I don't know. I don't know. People are talking about, well, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Well, you're not to tomorrow. <laughs> don't, don't live in that kind of fear. That, that can instantly be broken off your life, and I believe it will be. See, the, we, we, we recognize primarily that water baptism is, is uh, Peter said it, for the remission of the forgiveness of sins. Not that, that the water does it, but you understand that action, you receive forgiveness of sin. But you know, Jesus said something interesting to the Pharisees. He said, which is easier to do, forgive sins or heal, heal a body? Well, there's no difference. The power's the same. The working of the resurrection power of God's the same, either way. So today, uh, we are uh, gonna, gonna celebrate together this resurrection time but my heart is that every person that goes down in that water and comes up is going to come up free. Amen. Going to come up free. Amen. Any challenges you might have had, you're going to be free. God's going to work in your life supernaturally, and you're going to be free. It's your life in Him that we're talking about. And so where you say, well, I've been baptized more than once. That's all right. Yeah. Amen. It's all right. Listen, if you've been to the doctor more than once, it'd be all right to go be baptized more than once. Are you kidding me? So we're, we're going to celebrate today, and we're going to worship today. And uh, uh, the, the, Come on, Beck, y'all, come on. Uh, and we're going to get ready for baptism. And listen, I want you to get excited about it. And I just want to mention this to you. Listen, 
If you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, and this is resonating with you, maybe, maybe I, I just feel in my spirit that there's somebody here that, that you witnessed with what I said about being baptized when you were young and then slipping away from it and not serving God and not living the way that you ought to live. I got good news for you today. Listen to me. It's just a, it's just a moment away of you getting things right with God again. Amen. Just a moment away. All you have to do is pray. So just while they're going to get ready, and I've got to go get ready, but just bow your heads with me right now, quickly. Come on. If you say today, Pastor Sam, that's me. I know that I've got to get my life right. I know whether you've been baptized or not, but you know that you need that forgiveness in your life, and you know that you need a new life in Christ today. And you say, Pastor, that's me. Pray for me. Lift your hand right now, right where you're seated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lift your hand in the back. I'm looking around. Thank you. Lift your hands up. Lift them up. That's you. Okay, you can put them back down. Now listen to me today because this is about water, about the people that we're about to baptize. I want to tell you something. We're going to pray together right now. Okay? We're going to pray together right now. I got to tell Becky something real quick. You see that lady that's leaving? I want to tell you before I forgot. Sorry. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray together. Okay? So if you would bow your head right now, everybody, we're going to pray this together. Just say this with me. Say, Father, thank you that there's still chance for me. I'm, I'm in a place now to receive forgiveness in my life, to receive a new life. I choose Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you that you bring me to a place of newness of life, freedom in you to live for you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you have no clue why we're so excited, then maybe it's because you haven't yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We can take care of that today. Hallelujah. We want every person to walk out of here, out of the grave. I want you, if you have not accepted Jesus and you want to do that today, just lift your hand with me right now. Lift your hand with me right now. Okay, hallelujah, hallelujah. So I take it that all of us are walking out of here free, redeemed, healed, whole in the name of Jesus. Yes, if this is your first time here today, you just gotta understand, we love Jesus. And so I would love for you, there's a card in your seat back. It just simply says the card. If you would fill that out for us, drop it in one of the containers on your way out. And I would love to invite you, if this is your first time, Come back and worship with us again another Sunday. Easter Sunday would be an amazing time. We're having two services, if you didn't hear me say it before. 9, 10, 45 a.m. I'd love to see you this Friday night, 6.30 p.m. We're going to have communion as a family. I love you all. Have a great week and rejoice with those who got baptized today. God bless you.